they're trying to float hyenas to ten cent this week to be like, hey, do you want an almost finished game for cheap? I believe Halo Wars 2 was somewhat successful because the CA executives had very little control over the direction. Total War was a winning formula for a long time until now. People who stayed there will have to adapt or leave essentially. My eyes opened after leaving CA. So I've had a few more leaks on the subject of hyenas, which is to be expected. This is half the company almost being laid off, if my sources are correct. So it makes perfect sense that I have a few people coming to me every now and then as they find my channel and see the email address in the description and want to chip in with their own unique perspective, for which I'm very grateful and I really appreciate the trust, as always. So thanks very much. Let's get into it. Let's start with the short but sweet. I'm a developer for CA who worked on Hyenas. I am at risk of losing my job at the moment. It is currently unconfirmed whether I will or not. And we have further confirmation that Hyenas is causing devastation throughout the entire company. Some of the team that worked on Hyenas will be shuffled around, but most will be let go, as well as employees from other areas of the business. There won't be lots of new resources dedicated to Total War now that Hyenas is cancelled, like some people might want. And of course, there's evidence to suggest the complete opposite. I've had comments, emails from people saying that they were working on Total War, but are now going to be made redundant after Hyenas. For months before they cancelled Hyenas, Sega employees from Japan, I imagine fairly high up the corporate ladder, had come to the CA studios to monitor progress and assess the game, since they were unhappy with the progress it had made. So they suspected shit was fucked for months, and of course I've had reports of it being since April. There was no forewarning to the developers that Hyenas was going to be cancelled. Perhaps the higher-ups at CA knew, but the vast majority of the CA employees found out the same day that it was made public that they were cancelling Hyenas. I found out that Hyenas was mostly cancelled not because of anything to do with the game, but because Sega was ill-prepared for the COVID money train for digital goods and services to stop when lockdowns ended. Cancelling Hyenas just happened to be the easiest thing to get money back again. Ugh, that... That seems like such an intuitive thing that I even talked about with reference to Warhammer 3 and videos years ago. I don't understand how these companies can't see this coming. People are sitting at home, on Steam, on Amazon, spending their money that they're getting from the government, and that's going to eventually come to an end when the pandemic's over and these companies can't see this? What the hell? And here's the juicy part. They're trying to float hyenas to 10 cent this week to be like, hey, do you want an almost finished game for cheap? Whether anything comes of this or it was just an idea thrown around to try and recuperate some money, who knows. So this could be happening tonight, this could be happening tomorrow, this could be happening right now. It might happen, it might not happen. It has been floated. So that could end up being what happens to hyenas, that could be the fate of hyenas. Something similar to what happened with Arena. They tried to sell that to the Russians, and that failed, and then they tried to sell it to China, and I think that failed, and I think it's just a dead game at this point. So my source goes on. There was an engine change halfway through the development of Hyenas because of the limitations of the engine they used, which was the Alien Isolation engine. They had to switch to use Unreal, which hampered development, but did make Hyenas modern in comparison to Total War. It was meant to be a live service game. But they had no live service features and barely anyone working on it. No one wanted to use CA live service because it was dog shit. <laughs> and that source has given me information that I've already confirmed to be true that has aged really well. So everything that I just read out seems pretty solid. I'm now going over to another source to continue. The Halo Wars 2 team was on boarded to work on Hyenas, codename Keaton at Spartan House. About 30-50% to 50 of the console team devs left CA after shipping Halo Wars 2, and we've already had that described as well. There was very little contact with the Total War team as they were in another building at Spire Court. Hyenas was meant to be a payday and space inspired multiplayer game, and went through tons of design and art changes. We eventually settled into a battle royale space extraction shooter with a lot of microtransactions in mind. Basically a really generic game, but CA was surprisingly confident about it and convinced everyone it was to be a flagship CA live service title and sold at full price. I'm currently working on more successful game projects and it made me realise that Hyenas was doomed from the start and it was painfully obvious. I believe Halo Wars 2 was somewhat successful 
because the CA executives had very little control over the direction. 343 was in control and competent in the direction of the game. I assumed it was a similar situation with Alien Isolation. Oh boy, just wait until we get to that one. <laughs> it's going to be juicy. When I was working on the project, the headcount grew to around 60 to 100 people working on it. I don't really remember the number, just an estimated guess. A lot of them were new to the industry and inexperienced. Combine that with the executive's lack of vision and lack of direction for the project, it had led to countless game design and art style revisions. This led to the accumulation of scope creep, technical debt and terrible optimization. As you know, the more technical debt a project has, the more difficult it is to develop. Over the years, the technical debt just kept building. Art and gameplay still kept changing over the years, even after prototype and well into production stage. It became ridiculous. Basically, money kept pouring down the drain. We had internal weekly development blogs and emails so that all the developers could read about all the ongoing projects at CA. Oh man, that sounds interesting. Total War was very consistent in delivering regular updates. Highness had about one update every few or several months because we had nothing new or major to share. <laughs> there was one map and eight playable characters in development, each with a weapon or two and an ability. I played the open beta in 2023 because I was curious what had changed. The amount of content stayed mostly the same. One additional character, art style and UI changes. We planned for cosmetics for microtransactions as well, but due to constant content changes it was impossible to outsource them because the foundations were not set in place. We had Neil Blomkamp coming to the Spartan House studio helping out with the Hyenas project. I remember it didn't last long and I never heard back from him, not sure why though. Everyone was excited to meet him. We had somewhat regular retrospective meetings where we gave feedback on what went well, what didn't. We give valuable feedback on issues we were facing. The executives knew about this, but nothing was improved. They straight up ignored some highly experienced people in the team. Some example feedback that I could remember. Using the tools for Halo Wars 2 was abysmal and needed updates to keep it from crashing. The project lacked vision and direction. Constant changes in design and art. Because the art assets had a short turnaround and most likely not final, it was made with poorer quality than it should have been. A few of the hyenas characters were potentially offensive. A stereotypical Jamaican pirate with an AK who later became Mosey. A stereotypical drag queen who later became Galaxia. A lot of my colleagues called them out and we had meetings with the design and executives to address them, but they dismissed it as they didn't see it that way. It was later changed after I left. The hyenas gameplay was fun for the first 20 to 30 minutes as a first time user experience, but it got stale pretty quickly. It felt like a small demo project rather than a double A or even triple A game. I strongly believe that Sega was disappointed in the development of Hyenas and would rather cancel the game than ship it to save face. I wanted to share my story because I spent years working at the project and was really not surprised it was cancelled. My CA friends are still looking for jobs, some of them have families and babies to look after. It has been really hard on them. So now I started asking them some questions. Who do you blame? Is it the recently fired Rob? If you had to ultimately place blame for this. They went on. I would blame the executives. Charlie Boucher, David Nichols, Alexandria Brewer, Jude Bond. Also the third one worked on Thief, which was a pile of shit. Thief 2014. My god, I hated that game so much. That was not a real Thief game. What the hell was that? And Jude Bond worked on Alien Isolation, which was an absolute shit show. Uh, the other two, the first two, I don't really have much to comment on. I know Charlie Boucher worked on GTA, but they went on. The devs themselves are not to blame. They're some of the most talented and hardworking people I know. They just have no power but to do whatever makes executives happy. And later on, they added onto this. It's just the people high in the hierarchy that angers me. And they commented on Rob. He usually does annual presentations about money and graphs, lol, but otherwise I don't really know him. And on the ongoing shit show with CA DMCA striking me, frivolously or fraudulently, and flamethrowering, napalming their entire forums, they commented, I haven't seen anything like this in my entire career in the industry. <laughs> so I asked, do you think these four people you named conspired to hide the poor progress from Sega? And they answered, yeah, I believe so. Lack of project updates on the weekly post is a strong indication of that. 
And I responded, Yep, I always suspected Sega were unaware of the failure after I heard Sega increase presence lay on. I think that was because they eventually noticed, began investigating, and then finally intervened. And I've had several people now comment that they were aware of Sega catching on and starting to get more hands-on, because they were initially quite hands-off and just letting Sega get on with fucking everything up, as they always do. But as they realised that money was just getting pissed away and nothing was actually getting done, <laughs> they started to keep a close eye. So I went on. A question I can ask, how early were CA planning on including microtransactions? Was that the goal all along? And they answered, we had plans to outsource the cosmetics early on, but we weren't ready for it until the foundations were set in place. For example, if the model is not final, but we made skins for the character or weapon, if the base model has changed, all the skins will need reworking, sometimes redoing the whole thing, basically pouring money down the drain. We didn't have a legal team reviewing our work early on. After I left, I heard we had a legal team reviewing the art and more rework was done. So I asked, this is highly unusual, isn't it? These binnings and reworks are not at all common elsewhere in the industry. It explains the limited characters, the limited everything. Your descriptions of it being a double A result make sense. And they responded, normally these are scrapped after prototyping slash vertical slice before production, but ever since Hyenas was in production, it gets treated like a prototype. I worked on a few projects that were like that in other studios. I would say it's common for inexperienced studios, but successful studios, it's very rare. I then pivoted. Something I've speculated on in the past is NFTs. Is this just totally baseless? Possibly relates to the microtransaction aspect. And they just said, yep. Alright, so that settles that then. NFTs were never going to have anything to do with hyenas. That these devs know of, anyway. And this really shocked me. It was widely known that the devs shared stories that in the men's toilet, someone shoved a baguette into and blocked the toilet. The culprit was not found to this day. Apparently true, but I wasn't there when it happened. I was taken completely aback. How long was the toilet blocked for? And they responded, no idea how long it was blocked for. I quickly changed the subject. Do artists really want to make Fortnite art and not gritty immersive hardcore stuff, or is it entirely just pushed down from executives? Eventually pushed by executives, we had no choice but to make executives happy. At one point they decided they wanted tune shading. That's when they departed from the realistic dark look. I didn't expect they would go that direction. What prompted the change? Was there something in particular, the massive rise of Fortnite? That was late 2017 or early 2018 that Fortnite really took off. I remember it because I was playing PUBG and then started seeing people talking about Fortnite suddenly. They answered, they wanted to copy more successful titles. Hyenas became a mishmash disaster. Is there anything you think other studios would be able to learn from the massive failure of Hyenas? And they said, executives have to learn to take feedback from the collective of the studio. Listen to experienced developers. Minimize scope creep and iterations. Lock down game design and art style after prototyping. Don't make a Frankenstein of a game. We've been given feedback to executives for years. Nothing changed. And I asked, and do you think something like Hyenas is a result of a CA problem or a wider game industry problem? A CA problem, though I imagine CA is not the only one. Total War was seen as a safe project, so not much innovation has happened. So devs who were part of the company since the beginning haven't developed their skills. Total War was a winning formula for a long time until now. People who stayed there will have to adapt or leave essentially. My eyes opened after leaving CA. So I asked, So Hyenas didn't change how you look at game development in the game industry. You see it as a localised, isolated problem. Yep, 100%. And I had to ask, and you actually really dislike CA or even hate them. Some areas I hated, some I loved, it's bittersweet. I wanted what was best for CA, but there's some deep shit going on. They need to take a laxative to colon cleanse it out. Too many baguettes for too long. No joke, they really need to colon cleanse that company. So you really see CA's problem as being a problem of staff, a problem of bad people in high positions. Yep, out of touch people in high positions, sadly. And this is probably the most common and prevalent complaint. I don't know if there's anyone that I've talked to that hasn't said this. And sometimes the descriptions are almost beyond belief. And now we have 400 people being fired. And there's clearly a very strong argument to be made that these 400 people are going to be fired because CA is just fucking incompetent. And the top of the company is just packed with incompetent crony arseholes that keep each other in that position. 
that's quite common, I think. That's how it always works in these corporate structures, these big bloated companies. They all buddy up and keep each other at the company, collecting their salaries, looking out for each other. No matter how shit it is for the people underneath them. Whenever you have a mass layoff of like 40 or 42%, I think it worked out at exactly 42%. You know that the company is just a fucking mismanaged, complete shit show, and everything I've heard confirms that CA is just no one should be fucking given CA money until they get rid of these people. I think I would I would refuse to buy these games out of principle if I was even going to buy them, if I was even tempted to buy these games until they sorted their shit out, administered the laxative as it was put here, fucking remove the baguette. To summarize the analogy. Creative Assembly is a company that is clogged full of complete shit. But I went on. From previous conversations, I've heard descriptions from people describing CA and summarise what they said as CA is a fossil of a company. Kind of a strange English antiquated relic from the 90s or something. In a lot of ways. Does that fit? And they answered, makes sense. I agree. They are resistant to change, especially the Total War team. Especially the Total War team resistant to change. Holy shit. Isn't this interesting to see from someone that worked on Hyenas? Kept using the same formula, lots of old guys in high positions, older devs don't want to learn new tools. So I commented, so they make their subordinates cling to old ways at the cost of productivity. Yep, other studios I've worked at, they are highly adaptive to technological progress, keeps them ahead and relevant. Even with 3D game standards going PBR from 2015, Total War games still looked very dated. Today we even have real-time ray tracing. Pharaoh has still got a really dated graphics look. And then on the subject of Sophia and on CA expanding. I just thought CA have expanded too quickly. I kind of knew CA was in a bubble when they expanded that quickly. There was legit concerns among devs that we were going too quickly. Just leadership thought they were playing safe. Oh man. And I commented, Yep, growing pains. There's change that's too rapid to be supported structurally. There exists a limit. And they agreed with me. Like cancer, there's a limit to growth. Simple logic. I felt that it should be common sense. And I asked a question that I was just dying to now. Are there any executives or people in leading positions that you actually liked or would want to compliment that were not incompetent? that were not fools, that did not ruin projects with incompetence. There are none. They're just greedy old guys. I only care for my friends. They just culled almost half the company. And I went on. Do you want to see CA restructure itself to fix this, or do you think it cannot and wish it to die? Needs new leadership, to be honest. The leadership, at least, is a complex question. And after some thinking, they went on. But I do think they need a complete restart from the ground up and keeping devs who like to keep learning and improving what's actually best for CA. A lot of devs see CA as a way to settle down, stop learning and start a family. That's the impression I got. And there's a bit of back and forth here. And being in the middle of a quiet, slow, old English town fits with it. It is a really quiet town and peaceful. At a game studio where nobody ever gets fired. It's really odd for game studios to be in a quiet town. You'd rather want a studio to be in a major town to hunt for talent. Yep, this is the plan with Newcastle location, I think, next to an emerging English Silicon Valley of offices. And then they commented on this. There's a running joke that CA runs half of Horsham. Like, we book an entire cinema for company meetings. When we're done and exit the building, I see children ask, where do these people come from? In a quiet town, all wearing CA hoodies. A real life Total War platoon. And at this point I shared a screenshot of a comment I got on one of my videos a couple of weeks earlier and it reads as follows I worked at CA for 12 years on the Total War team and I'm now losing my job over this even though I never worked on Hyenas. It's not brand or responsible, it's one person in particular who pushed that project relentlessly, the CPO. The rest of the brand team raised flags about that project many many times and called for its cancellation years ago before it spent all that money but they were ignored every time. Now they're the ones being made redundant while he sits in his office and takes zero responsibility. It's sickening. And in response to that screenshot, my source had the following to say. Poignantly. Yep, we're taking the punishment for it. Whilst the people up top are enjoying their job security and big paychecks. And that's it. Thanks again to all the people that decided to contact me.
This is such a mess, I've been calling out the same kind of mismanagement and negligence and incompetence for years. So every time someone that worked underneath it and saw it firsthand describes what it's like internally, I just shake my head and I'm like, yeah, I know, I've been playing the games, I know, I know man, it sucks. That's it for this one, see you next time. P.S. Rob's fired. If you like my work and want to support me, then I have a Patreon page. I try to give out perks, which includes monthly updates and a patron-only Discord. Special thanks to Matteo Olivetti, Nerdington Paints, SJ Mage, Bador Nasser, and Desync was here.